In our last lesson, we left quite a few to-dos left to clean up to fully implement the functionality that we would want from allowing users to, to log into our site. And in this one, we're going we're gonna to knock off uh, one or two of the big ones. And in particular, this idea of remembering that the user has logged in or remembering the user once they register is going to be pretty important. So the concept here is that when someone logs into a site, so imagine you logging into your, um, your, your email, uh, you know, the next time you visit that site, you do not have to log in again, right? The site has remembered that you already logged in. So that concept of, of sort of, you know, quote unquote, remembering, um, that's a fuzzy word, but when we talk about how to do this in a web programming context, there's a specific way that we can manage that remembering process for our web applications, and it involves a new concept uh, of a session. So I'm going to use a session and, and use Flask's session object. So let me go ahead and import it, add it to my list of my ever-growing list of things I'm importing from the Flask module. And then I'll scroll down. And I want to do this within the login and register functions where I have these two to-dos. So the session is an object that you can use to store data that is associated with a specific user from one request to the other. It's how the server remembers data associated with that user. So when a user logs in, I want to put in the session a piece of data that has, the session's a dictionary, so I can put data in it the same way I would normally in a dictionary. Um, and let me say, put in, you know, under the key email, let me put the user's actual email, okay? And so this will be a flag for me. The next time they come, I'll be able to look in that session object and say, is this somebody I've seen before, okay? And I'll be able to use that to manage whether or not they're considered to be logged in to the site. So this one line is pretty powerful, and um, we'll add it also down below in register. Okay, so once a user registers and we put them in the database, we'll go ahead and you know log them in by putting their email in the session. So one thing you might be thinking about is this session object, right? How does this differentiate between, you know, me logging in or you logging in to the same site? And it turns out that's a, that's a piece of information involving a concept called cookies. We'll learn about cookies um, in a future lesson. Uh, but for now, we just need to trust that the, the server knows whether or not it's me or you, and it can, do, it can pull our specific emails out of the session object or out of the session dictionary when we request it to. Okay, so this will, once I've put the session, uh, the email object in the session or the email address in the session, I'll have the sense of remembering that the user has logged in. Okay, and we'll go ahead and let's just kind of see how we might log a user out really quickly. We're going to add uh, um, a link to this on the site in a little bit. But if I create a logout route and a logout function, at slash logout, and this just need, doesn't need to be a um, this does not need to be a post request. I can say delete session email. Basically remove that user's email from the session and then return redirect there. So the existence of this email property in the session dictionary is what's going to be a flag as to whether or not a user is logged in. When they log in, we'll put their email in the session. When they log out, we'll take their email out of the session. And then the next step is to, on a request-by-request request basis, check for that email to say, have they logged in? Is their email in the session? If not, let's go make them log in. So that's the next step. Let me come up above my login function and create a new function called require login. Okay, and this is going to be a special type of function that we haven't encountered in uh, our our working with Flask yet. So this is not going to be a request handler, right? We basically want this function to run for every request. We want every request that comes in uh, to be able to check and say, has this user logged in? And so there's a special way to do that, and we can do that in Flask by using a special decorator. The decorator here is before request. And that basically says to Flask, that decorator says, run this function before you call the request handler for the incoming request. And this gives us a chance to basically filter all incoming requests or do a given check on all incoming requests. So when this function runs, we want to check for the existence of the user's email in the session dictionary. So I could say if not, uh, or I could say, well, rather, I got that backwards. Um, if email, 
not in session. So if there's not a key called email in the session dictionary, in other words, this user has not logged in yet, let's redirect to the uh, login page. Okay, so if the users, if we don't have a key in the section dic session dictionary, uh, a little bit of a tongue twister there. If we don't have a key in the session dictionary called email, let's redirect the user to the login page and force them to log in. Again, the idea of logging in here for our web application is to have evidence of that user by virtue of having their email in the session. Okay, let's go ahead and try this out. Okay, so I'll just try to go to the root URL. And notice I get an error. The page isn't redirecting properly. Let's go look at the console and see if we can see a little bit more about this error. Wow, so notice I've got a lot of requests piled up here. There seem to be mm, probably two or three dozen requests that all happened at once. I only made one request though, right? See that these are all 302s. A 302 is a redirect request. So what happens? Well, if we go back and look at this require login, again, we said that this is going to run at the beginning of every request. So this function gets run at the beginning of every uh, request before the specific request handling functions get run. And if I'm not finding the email in the session, I'm going to redirect to the login. Okay, so the request first request comes in and it uh, goes to the root URL. That results in a redirect, right? to log in. The second request will be to log in. When I request the login page, this function will again run again because it runs on every incoming request. Again, then we will not find the email in the session. The user indeed has not logged in yet. So we will redirect yet again. So we have this continual redirect. And basically the way you can think about this is that we're requiring the user to log into our site, but we haven't specified that it's okay for people who aren't logged in to view the login and register pages. So we basically need to create, you know, what you might call a whitelist or a list of pages that you don't need to be logged in in order to view. So we need to add that little piece of functionality here as well. So let me call, uh, let me create a list called allowed routes. And this is going to be a list of routes that users don't have to log in to see. So I'm gonna say that they don't need to log in to view the login route, and they don't need to log in to view the register route. Okay, so if uh, email is not in session, I wanna add one more check to this conditional. I also wanna say if request.endpoint not in allowed routes and email not in session. So request.endpoint, recall that the request is the object that, uh, that, that, that Flask uses to represent the incoming HTTP request. The endpoint is basically the given, uh, the given path there, right? So if I say that the endpoint is not login and not register, in other words, request.endpoint is not in the allowed routes, um, then that means I'm wanting to the force the user to log in, so I should also check for the email in, in the session. Okay, if the request.endpoint is in the allowed routes, then we'll skip over this redirect and just continue processing the request as previously. So now let's check that we can go to the login screen. Okay, that's great. And if we go back and look at our requests here, uh, we see that we just have a single request that was answered by a 200. That's because our, our request filter here and the require login function, we didn't trip this conditional. We didn't, uh, this conditional did not evaluate the true because the request that endpoint was in the allowed routes list. Okay, and we can also test that we can go to the registration page without logging in as well. However, I still, if I go to a different page, get redirected to the login page. So now let's test that we can log in. So this is an interesting error, and let's just kind of read the error message. It's very, very descriptive and specific about what the problem was. It says, runtime error, the session is unavailable because no secret key was set. Set the secret key on the application to be something unique and secret. 
And the secret key is a property that needs to be set on the application in order for sessions to work. And we haven't done that yet. So let's just go back to our application and go ahead and do this. Um, and this is something that's going to be used for proper, uh, for, for proper data security for session management um, with in Flask. And we'll have more to say about exactly what that means in the next class. For now, we just need to go ahead and, and obey the error message. So we'll say app.secretkey equals, and this should be some string. Let me go ahead and just generate a string from my password manager that's somewhat random. That looks good. Okay, so we have a secret key now, uh, and that should work. Let's go ahead and go back here. So I'll need to try to log in again. Okay, and that seemed to be successful. I was redirected to the main screen, which means two things. It means that uh, I got through the login handler that um, this post request, all the code beneath that conditional, I got through all of that and was redirected, which means that my user login was verified. Um, presumably my email was added to the session. We'll check that in just a second. And then I had a return uh, redirect to the root path. That redirect, though, was a separate request. So that actually hit and actually tested the require login again. So when we redirected, a separate request came into the root path. That hit this require login again. And at that point, we were at the root URL. So we actually did hit this part of the conditional that says, is the email in the session? And uh, that in, in in fact, was found that the email was in the session, and so I was allowed in. So we actually did test both pieces of code in one request because there actually were two requests as part of that. We can see that down here in the uh, in the console. Okay, let's go test the registration. So that worked. Let's go ahead and we can log out by just going to slash logout. We'll add a link to that in a second. Logout goes and deletes my email from the session. So let's check that that actually worked while we're at it. So I'll try to go to the root URL. And I see once I go to the root URL, I'm redirected to the login screen. So logout uh, has worked. Let's go ahead and register for a new account and test that that worked. Um, let's see. Let's register the education team. Okay, and that seemed to have worked again. We're at the main root URL here. Let's go check the database and see if the education team is now in the database. Yeah, and there they are. So let's do one last thing to clean up this set of tasks, which is to add a link to log out on all of our pages. So let me come up to base.html and I'll put up here, I'll just put uh, div with a logout link. Okay, so now if we come back, refresh, we have a link there we can use to log out by clicking on that. It makes a, a logout request and we come back here to this page. Great, so that's how we can manage uh, users and their state within the application in terms of whether or not they're logged in and logged out. And to reiterate, the way we're doing that is we're using sessions, and sessions are a concept that are not unique to Flask, although the way we're using them in, in this particular case is unique to Flask. Sessions exist in other frameworks. In Flask, we can use the session by uh, storing a new entry in the section session dictionary, and we can store that as a key value pair. Here, the key will be the email. The value will be the actual email for that specific user. And we store that in the, in, in the session. And when the user comes back again and again, we check to see if that email is in the session. And if not, and if also the page they're asking for is not in the allowed routes or the white list of pages that everybody can see whether or not they're logged in, then we redirect them to the login screen. And we need to make sure that that white list, that allowed routes, includes the page that we're redirecting to. Okay, so that's how we can manage sessions and user state within our application. All right, in the next lesson, we're going to learn about how we can better send messages to our views and for things like 
uh, well, say this to do, why login failed. We'll fix this in the next lesson.